Hey, how's it going everyone? So today we're going to be reacting to I set off so much dynamite it ended reality in Astroneer. Uh, Astroneer gameplay by Let's Game It Out. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're checking out Astroneer today, a fun planetary romp where you go down to various planets, take every resource you can, and leave the planet way worse than you left it. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? So let's get started. It's a bit like satisfactory in a way, but not at the same time. The controls for it feel real janky, but it's a fun game. Our journey begins as our little spacecraft takes off from orbit. Let's watch as our little craft finds a suitable place to land. And the it moment we exit our drop... It could just be my sensitive mouse. I was trying to play with controller, and when I tried to move things around, it was acting like my mouse was moving. So I was just like, okay, I'll just do this part with my mouse. So I, you know, set the controller down, started playing with mouse and keyboard. And then it just, it, it kept being, I don't know, janky. It's like it was snapping to, to a section when I'm trying to not. Again, I'm sure it'll get better when I uh, get more used to the control schemes. Dropship, it magically transforms into a habitat for us. After which time, like a virus asserting itself, our tiny little building grows. And perfect, I'm already a plague on the planet. So to be the ideal astronaut... I kind of like where it set him. It just put him right in the middle of nowhere. Mine set me, uh, like, right up against a mountain. Here, there's two things we've got to do. First, we need to expand our base... And we need to take up all the planet's beautiful resources. And then maybe when we're done, we can go up to this planet here. Or maybe those planets. Don't worry, you big beautiful rocks in the sky. We're coming for you. So, uh, I did buy this game because I've seen that Josh had a video for it. Uh, what can I say? I, I buy a lot of the games that he plays. And they're, they're not as fun as, uh... As it is in his video, he, he makes those videos so great. Like, he makes the game have that much more appeal. Um, anyway, let, let's see how this video goes. So here's our starting cubes, the basic building blocks of what we need to get started, of which first we've got the oxygenator. This is going to generate beautiful oxygen for us via this lovely tether that you can see going from me to the base. But to make it work, we got to plug the thing in. Thankfully, you can pick up things in this game really easy and apparently move them all over the place with your mind powers. Or if you're not a wizard, hold it in your bare hands. And if you look under the machinery, you'll see these two little sockets. Wander on over to the side of our base and you'll see a nice place to put it. There it is, all content in its new home. Home, totally oxygenating. Meanwhile, we've got these two other crates, one of which is this starting platform, which once we unpack it, you can see that it also has a bunch of those sockets. I'm gonna go ahead and put you right... <laughs> there we go, perfect. And look at this, something to put in it. This here is our medium printer, which has got those two little sockets, so let's go ahead and put this thing in its new home. Ta-da! It's beautiful. Now through this thing, we can make all kinds of items, like a larger printer and a research chamber, but we can't print these things just yet because we need to get these components. Stuff like resin and com- Wait, the arm, it reached all the way over to where it needed to print. Hmm. Compound, which are things we can make by plundering the planet of its resources. But you might be wondering, how can we get those resources? Well, I'm glad you asked. It also placed him right by that stuff, and that took me forever to find, because I, I didn't know where the hell to look, and I was looking in the, the mountain. It's right there in the dirt. Asked. Behold, my terrain gun thing. With this little thing, we can run right over and just start sucking up resources, as well as terraform the planet. Just suck up all those resources. Watch as they go into the gun forever. Okay, cool. If you check out my backpack now, not only am I filled up on whatever this material is, but it's popping out of the top of my backpack, as well as every orifice of my gun. Thank God there's so many ways to collect resources. So now we have plenty of compound. Okay, let's make ourselves a large printer. Huh, doesn't seem to be printing. Oh, it's because I need to give it power, which means we just take this little cable plug here and just 
go ahead and plug it in just like that. Each platform has four of these power cables. I mean, you only need to connect one, but I'm not going to miss a chance to make something hideous. So let's do our part and connect all four. Mmm, looking excessive. Oh yeah, there we go. Print my dreams into reality. Oh, and then gift wrap them for me. <laughs> Thanks. You stay right over there for now. We're also going to make a large platform to go with it, but first we need to pick up some resin, which I think I see way in the distance here. I believe this is it, that thing that looks like mac and cheese. Don't be shy, Earth Vacuum. Get in there and get it all. I can also pull my backpack off and get a better look, look a although like it leaves my cheese, guy looking yeah. weirdly naked. But hey, yep, that's resin, all right. And put that enriched pasta to good use. So here's another thing we have to worry about. You see my little glowing tether there? If I get too far away, it disappears. And that's when you can see my oxygen meter slowly going down. And if that runs out, I think we all know what happens. Thankfully, there's always fresh astronauts to take their place. So to solve this oxygen problem, we can just... I wish he would have mentioned how long you have to go before you die. Like, is it just an instant death as soon as it's gone or what? Because I had some really close calls. Um, I think I died the most in this game by falling and a plant. Just extend the tether. To do that, we can build stuff right off of our backpack. In this case, a bunch of tethers. All it takes is... Oh, I did blow myself up. That happened. So now I know don't stand near the dynamite when blowing it up. This is a little compound, and ta-da, a whole bundle of tethers, which I can then add to the landscape. And as long as I'm connected to these things, I'm always getting oxygen, which I'm sure you can see where this is going. And if you didn't, I'm sure you do now. At least nearby the base, anywhere you walk is going to find itself connected to a tether. You like oxygen? Because you'll get it. And here we have our modern art. I call it Spider-Man Hates Mac and Cheese, or Loves It Too Much. I also like it because if it gets dark out, we're going to have no trouble finding our base, since all these tethers are nice and glowy. And I've got even more tethers strapped to my back. Because what if I want to go out into those trees where I see some plane debris? Well, that's no problem. We just drop tethers as we go. Hello, wreckage. And what might you be? What is this, like a space sailboat? Salvage, huh? Well, I don't really know what to do with this yet. So for now, we'll just go ahead and put it on top of our base with everything else. Oh, speaking of, my large platform finished printing. Let's also put that up here and unpack. And then let's print another large platform. Okay, so I discovered something pretty interesting. If you take a box and just hover it in the air like this, then drop it down and quickly open it, it just stays up there. Well, let's see if I... That's genius. I, I... What? can get it some power. <laughs> Perfect. Now let's take my large printer and let's give it its new home high in the sky. Welp, I think I know how this base is gonna go. Okay, that seems like a good start, doesn't it? Connect this one here. This guy goes right here and up here. And there we have it. A very normal space base. I like to call it the space nest. Well, now that this exists, we gotta find some stuff to put on all these platforms. And for that, we're gonna have to unlock some stuff. So if we... If you really need all those platforms, that's like a genius way to do it keep your area clean pull out our backpack then again it's also not a genius way to do it he could have extended all of those out and not needed those uh th this is josh we're talking about and i honestly don't know much about this game i just i just got it like today and i, I i've only played like two hours worth or something We've got something along the edge the game calls the research catalog, which is where we unlock a bunch of stuff. And boy, are there a lot of different things. To unlock stuff, we have to use something called bytes. And currently, we have zero. So here's how we get bytes. We run around the landscape looking for stuff like this. Ah, a research sample. I shall hold and scan it for bytes. <laughs> ah, cool, we did it. But it's not just those little clown hats. There's other stuff too, like this lovely fellow. Compatible with research chamber. Ah, geez, where's that in my tablet? Ah, research chamber. Chamber. Already unlocked. Don't worry, little guy. We're going to give you a good home. Oh, look at that. It's printing it right onto that platform. How doubly convenient. And let's get you researched. I believe this means it's going to get me a cool 400 something bytes at a record pace of 12 bytes per minute. I can't seem to get that to power. And it might need to be slotted onto one of those. That's probably what I needed that other uh, large platform for was to slot that on. All right, that makes sense.
That's fine, you just do your thing. We got plenty of things to keep us occupied. For example, let's do some exploring. Surely we'll find something interesting out here, right? Like, what's this beauty over here? Looks like a piece of a rocket ship. Well, first let's tether it off, like it's some kind of archaeological dig. dig site. And now let's dig it up. Oh yeah, it's just like Jurassic Park. You remember that scene in Jurassic Park when they delicately revealed, like, a rocket thruster? Can I get rid of trees, too? Oh, that's a big ol' yes. Well, looks like we got <laughs> two goals here now. One is to get rid of all the trees that have probably been here untouched for generations. Ooh, and look, look what we got. A new specimen. Oh, we got a couple of specimens, actually. Okay, I think we're almost good. I think we've almost freed the thing. I am definitely in the right position for when this thing falls. I stand corrected. <laughs> I think no matter what I do, the thing floats. Can I hop inside? The answer is yes. And it has a thing I can take back. Cool. Quite the haul we got here. Ugh, do I have to carry them all the way over there? Can't I just unlock this buggy now? Like, how do I get aluminum? According to the game's built-in Astropedia, aluminum Aluminum is a refined resource, which means we're gonna have to make it, which I believe we can do by building this smelting furnace. And look at that, it only costs 250 bytes to unlock, so let's do it! And print. Ta-da! Okay, thank God I can use everything from all the way down here. Okay, now we've got a smelter for all our refining, melting, and burning needs. So I've learned that aluminum here is made out of something called laterite, which is my understanding that we can find some of that underground. You know what? Why didn't I try this earlier? This seems like the first thing I would have tried to do. Oh, looks like we found something. In we go. Oh, let's see. What do we have over here? Ah, poker chips. <gasps> Laterite, <laughs> aluminum material. Just what I've always wanted. Literally well, a jackpot. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Oh right, I gotta unlock the thing. Ugh, I don't wanna go pick down. up all those things I left oh, over there for research. Can't I just research these little things progressively over time? Wait, found my salvation. A closer by research item. And in you go. So I added more research platforms to this madness, but I can't stop now. Not when I don't know how high we can build yet. Huh, you know? I think we might be running out of power. I think that's what the flashing red means. All right, let's page through the almanac. Ooh, look at this. A solar array. Oh, and look at this. A wind turbine. Well, those things seem to be blown in the wind. I say we go with wind tur turbine. Now we just need to find glass and ceramic, which I believe are based off clay and quartz, which we can find somewhere around here. I mean, I feel like clay would be like in the mud, right? I mean, eventually. Or just open up and do a cavern. side of the earth when it spits you out well i guess that's not the earth if you jump through one side of the planet would it spit you out the other side of the planet and then would you fall right back into that like a never-ending loop though copper well as always i'm sure this will come in handy too hmm. or would you just like balance out in the middle and just be sitting there hovering Does this planet have a molten core like Earth, in which case you're not going through that center? Hmm, the plot thickens. I've been drilling down and down for about an hour now. Still haven't found any clay or quartz. <gasps> oh my god. I found some clay down here. Uh, the journey was worth it. All I had to do was believe. Uh, you know what? I think I've stumbled upon something here. So what are you? Looks like it affects gravity, I can tell you that much. This is getting weirder and weirder. I guess here we are in the core of the planet. It looks like there's something going on down there, but I can't get to it. So for now, we're just gonna head back to the surface and worry about this later. But hey, at least we can dig to the core of the planet. Okay, well that's one Alien mineral down. What a fruitful endeavor this was. So let's take this clay, shove it in the smelter up here, and it looks it like looks it's like constructing something that, beautiful. It honestly looks like the core of that planet was not man-made, but like made by biological life forms, maybe? Or even technological life forms that are that advanced? 
for me. We'll just let that thing work while we go find some quartz. Synthetic life. <laughs> Found it. Turns out it was just below the surface. And there we go. Beautiful quartz. Shove it up in this machine. And there we go. Although strangely enough, I realized this little tear symbol here, those items are made with a small printer, which I can make right off of my back. And it just kind of sits on the ground. Let's just plug it in. And finally, it's wind turbine time. Look at the machine putting its hips into it. Ta-da! Okay, let's just attach this anywhere we can. Now to make 8 million more of them. Okay, there we go. Isn't that something? Especially when everything stops spinning. Huh, you know, as much as I like how this looks, I feel like there's so much more we could be doing. I mean, look at all that space up there. But first we need to build this, a small canister, which attaches right onto our gun. And now when I'm over here tearing up the planet, this little canister is holding onto the soil for later use. And that's when the fun begins. Because instead of digging down, now I can build up. And now we're going to use this to finally see up higher in our base. It can just like build under me and keep going higher and higher. I wonder how high we can go. Okay. Okay, so far so good. You can see the base down there and also the horizon of the planet. Wow, we're really high up here, aren't we? Well, no reason to not keep going. Oh my God, we're still going. It's getting dark. It's hard to get an angle, but you can vaguely see the base down there. But there's something else we can How see up here called the vastness of space. I do appear to be squaring off with some planets though. And also if you look over at the horizon, there's some weird stuff out there. Okay, we're at about half a canister of terrain remaining. Okay, and that's the end of that. There are like rockets and stuff that we can use to get into space. It is pretty darn cool that we can do this, though. You know, it is pretty windy up here and sunny in its own way. This gives me an idea, but we need to head back to the surface first for a nice, soft, bone-crunching landing. Okay, so I've got kind of an idea of what we should do next, and it does involve heading back up, just this time with a little more precision-ish. All I'm gonna do is just spend a little time making a lovely little spiral staircase, which hey. definitely isn't gonna take me a million years. Oh, man. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Okay, so I brought oxygen up here. We have another setting besides down and up. We can actually level out things. So we're going to make this a nice, smooth-ish ground. That's going to act as an extension of our base. And now that we've got this platform built, we need to go down and get some supplies. And I can think <laughs> of no easier way than this. So here's a better view of the thing I made. My space corkscrew. This is really only half the journey. Because now we need to make a bunch of large platforms. It's probably a way, way easier, easier way to do this. this. I, I never claim what I'm doing is smart. Okay, okay that's that's part part done. Done. I gotta get another shipment in, in the form of these beautiful, beautiful windmills. windmills. Well, I'll be, there, there really is. Wait. I carried the box. Wind, wind in space. space. Now, now that I've plugged like everything in, everything looks amazing. Unless the wind stops blowing, that's okay, I've got one more idea. So there's one other thing we can unlock, solar power. It only takes 3,750 bytes, so I figure we can unlock it. Okay, now we've got a giant interstellar platform here with two types of very vulnerable sources of power. Either the wind needs to blow or the sun needs to be out. Now you might be wondering, how are we going to get that power down there? For that, we're going to unlock a lovely little item called extenders. They're basically extension cords. Okay, here goes goes. Plug that in there. We're just gonna run like a hundred extension cords. Oh, wait a minute. Can I put these things along the side? Oh, yeah. And before you know it, almost all the way back to the planet. We did it. Power being pulled from this never-ending extension cord that goes all the way up to space. All that to say our power needs are probably finally met. So you know what it's time for? It's time to unlock the buggy. Oh, God, I'm so excited. Ta-da. Let's go have an adventure. Oh, it needs a seat. Ah, there it is, rover seat. Okay, you got it. Just put that on here. <laughs> Install it sideways. Cool. Now I'm really ready for an adventure. Oh my god, can you imagine riding in a buggy sideways? Don't forget the whole point of doing this, all of this, was just so I didn't have to carry these things back manually, which I still might have to do, because I don't think there's space on this thing. Let's see, can I just, like, put it on... Ah, yes, that's very useful, thank you. I'm glad the game even allows this. You can just chill where the driver's seat's supposed to go. Okay, friends, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. Ooh, a trailer? That sounds promising. Very promising. Oh, oh, and there's a power connector, which doesn't appear to connect anywhere on my little vehicle. I think it's meant to connect to this thing, the tractor. Unlock, and build, and open. Oh, see, there we go. Now we just connect this over like that. Oh, well, this is fun. Can I add more trailers? Only one way to find out. 
out. Oh, yeah. Before we all get too excited, yes, there's a limit. And it appears to be three. After that, it just won't let you connect. What about platforms? Can I put platforms on here? Well, not officially. Unofficially, Which though. Coming? Looks like it's coming with us all the same. Just gotta take those turns kind of lightly. Okay, and here we are. Somehow in one piece. Just put you on here, then you on there. Isn't that great? No problems at all. Finally. I never thought we'd get these things researched. Thank God we built an entire interstellar power grid and unlocked all kinds of stuff just so we didn't have to walk somewhere we can basically see in the distance. Okay, I think I've perfected the system. Just find these things and just gently put it on my mess of platforms. No need to crowd. There's room for everybody. And before you know it, we're heading back with a full bounty. And while this researching is getting done, let's take our buggy for a stroll. After all, there's one mystery that still needs solving. Do you remember when we were building our moon spire and we saw some weird shapes out on the horizon? Well, I want to know what those are. So we're going to go check them out. Like there's one right now. All right, buggy, I got faith in you. Just ignore all these desirable minerals. Luckily, this buggy can essentially scale anything. Okay, this is probably good enough. We'll have to take it from here on foot. Huh, what do you suppose this is? Looks kind of like the core underground. You know what the planet core didn't have, though? A modern-day electrical socket. So I guess we know what the next step is. That is, of course, if your guess was to head back home, get out your extenders, start running some cable, and let's hook that sucker up. Okay, so I did it. I ran power cables all the way over there. And then before you know it, we're all the way back to this thing. Here goes nothing. Oh, I see. Okay, what do we got? Huh. Okay, so what is this thing? Odd stone? Yes, I want to gaze. Uh, huh. So, I think this is us. This must be the center of the world. I guess these are other things on the surface flying around. I get the feeling it wants me to light up all of these. No problem, I can do that. Did you not see my finest work here? That's a lot. I found two of them. which was a little dot and I ran to that dot ran back to my base and I just started planting shit the other way uh, towers and then I found another dot and I'm like oh okay so I, I went to both of those and that's also where I got killed by that uh, that plant I got killed by a plant <laughs> Here. Okay, so we've already done that one, obviously. And I would imagine if we keep running away from that thing, yep, we eventually come up on another one, and another one, and so on and so forth. And it looks like each and every one of them have an outlet. Well, let's get started. Don't worry, though, we're not starting entirely from scratch. We're also going to make use of these things called splitters, and they do exactly what you'd think they do. We'll just pop this out here, and instead plug it in here, and this goes here, and now we can send power in another direction. So hang on, this shouldn't take that long. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, here we are, a mere three and a half hours later. I've been running these things all over creation, zigzagging beautifully over mountains, down through green fields, and then up some beautiful... I connected up every geothermal uh, vent in Satisfactory. It's okay. I don't know, probably five hours. That was just running to each node, planting a, a whatchamacallit, a, a, a geothermal generator, and running power poles to every everyone that pinged up on my map. I'm pretty sure I got every uh, geothermal vent in my save with a power pole on it. It's got close to like 5,000 watts of power, or megawatts of power, milliwatts, megawatts. But that's just geothermal vents, nothing else. No bio burners, no coal power. Beautiful handcrafted ramps. Okay, so we'll just plug you in. Yeah, that's great. We've seen the show before. You go ahead and finish your light show. We're going to go to the next location. And plug you in. And four total. It's all very impressive. And only two more to go. So that's number five. And finally, number six. In you go. Let's see what fabulous cash prizes we get. Well, all these nodes are now active, except the one in the middle. What happens if I activate? Oh, oh, they're like teleporter pads. Okay, I get it. I have no idea where I am now, but I suppose it's a good system. I guess I'll just follow the splitters all the way home. Okay, back to civilization. Now, you remember that hole we made? The one that took us all the way down to the core? Let's head... I wish that Satisfactory had a teleporter. <coughs> At least one to take you to each biome. 
back down and see how the planet core is doing. Hey there, I'm back. Oh, well, would you look at that? Oh boy, more pedestals. Wait a minute. That's not a standard electrical outlet. Hmm, this symbol seems familiar. Oh yeah, that's right. It's for quartz. Are you suggesting that I need to put it in that socket? But I didn't bring any quartz. Okay, hold on. Luckily, there's quartz kind of everywhere. Okay, I'm back. This time with a bunch of quartz. Okay, here, you take this. Oh, hello. Finally, some prizes. Geometric triptych embedded in a truncated pentacoron. Are these words that are supposed to mean something? Well, I can pick it up and daintily shove it in my backpack. So good enough for me. The force field's still up, though. But I think gravity means I can run along the walls. Yep. And on the other side, it nice. looks like... Oh, the easiest delivery quest ever. Oh, jeez, you again. Well, let's give it a gaze. Okay, the core is lit up now. Wait, what the heck is this? I'm going to assume based on its positioning that it's off-world. Well, you know what that, that means, like right? Space. It's time yeah. to go into outer space. And in order to do that, we have to unlock two things. First up is this small shuttle. And second is this solid fuel thrust. You know, this game's a lot like um, Satisfactory with the, uh, the, the drop pods. Because in that game, they shattered everywhere. And in this, there is debris everywhere. So obviously, there are more drop pods that shattered. They both require aluminum, but this thruster also requires ammonium, which in my travels of building all these extension cables, I've already run into. So we've already got that covered. And aluminum, of course, we just kind of had lying around still. Okay, so print the thruster and the small shuttle. <laughs> That's exactly how I wanted that printed. Already in launching position. Truly an inspiration to us all. Okay, and there it is. But it's not really going to do anything until we add the thruster. We'll just go ahead and attach that to the bottom. Limited fuel capacity, good for a round trip. Whatever. I'm sure it's fine. Bye, beautiful planet. Ah, oh, my base looks so nice from up here. So here we are in the solar system. This whole time we've been on the beautiful planet of Silva, but we've got other planets too, like DeSolo, with its no atmosphere, bare rock, and pockmarked landscape, and other planets like this radiated one called Aatrox, as well as a- Can you go to all of these planets? If you can, this game's gonna be amazing as shit. I've only played like two hours worth. A couple other planets and what the heck is that thing? Unidentified satellite. Is that the thing we were told about? Well, let's go find out. I mean, it sure looks like a thing, doesn't it? And here we are. Well, looking around, the first thing I see is a familiar face. Yet another odd stone, which if I open it up, we've got us here on the cosmic elevation. I'm willing to bet this purple thing is our beautiful planet Silva. And all these other things are the planets we haven't activated yet. Meanwhile, down below... Okay, so you have to activate those on every... It's a huge game. Here I notice there's a bunch of pedestals. Each one appears to have a different symbol. Ah, crap. Was I supposed to bring that thing I found on the other planet? And am I supposed to bring one from every planet? Really? You want me to go to every planet and activate every one of those things? Well, you got it. We're gonna start by going to that planet right next to Silva. Onward to DeSolo. Ooh, looks like our engine blew up. Well, no choice but to land, I guess. What could possibly go wrong? Ah, here we are. What a lovely crater we find ourselves in. That said, we got good news, we got bad news. The good news is I could print a small printer, which would allow us to print another thruster. The bad news is I have ammonium, but no aluminum. Well, you know, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll just dig straight down and find all the stuff we need. That's definitely not what I found. I found death instead. Okay, let's try this again. So let me tell you about all the rookie mistakes I've made. Thrusters destroyed. And see that big blue silhouette? That's where I was supposed to put that oxygen thing. Now the tethers don't work because I didn't bring it. Don't worry though, I've got a solution for this. Turns out with my mind powers, I can just pick this up. And as long as I stay close to this, I'll keep getting oxygen. So I'm just gonna take it with me everywhere I go. The solution was so simple. All right, spaceship, let's go find all the things we need. Okay, here's some resin and some quartz and some wolframite, whatever the hell that is. And thank God, you know Okay, too, uh, well that was surprisingly easy. Let's head back to Silva, pick up some some supplies and do this all proper like. You ready for something new and exciting? It's called the winch. We couldn't have it before because we couldn't get tungsten. But you know what makes tungsten? Wolframite, which we now have. The other thing the winch needs is rubber. Rubber we can make using the chemistry lab, which we can also now make because of tungsten. We basically feed it two different ingredients. Rubber we're gonna make right now, but something tells me we're gonna be making this soon. Explosive powder. But in the meantime, Ooh. rubber's just gonna have to do. Okay, there's the winch. So check this out. I think you're supposed to like put it on your tractor trailer here. You attach it to some. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do you gunpowder? 
something. Then when you ride off, it kind of just holds onto it. But I've learned that the winch is strong. Like, really strong. Like, if I attach it to this, I can just throw things around. Now that's a powerful tool. Now that we've resupplied, let's head back to what's it called. So basically, to conquer this planet, we need two things. Oxygen and enough power to jumpstart those thingamabobs. And right here, I think I have the recipe to do it all. So I've gone ahead and attached a winch to each one of these things. Because I've learned that our little tractor trailer friend here always provides me with oxygen. Now we're going to take our glorious solar panels here, strap them onto all the platforms, and now I'm going to attach all these winches to yours truly. And this is when the fun begins. Now that I have my oxygen needs met, let's see if all these solar panels have enough power to charge this thing. Okay, let's give this a shot. Oh, would you look at that? It's enough power for everybody. Yes. <laughs> yes, the most elegant solution. Onward, power brigade. Let us explore new frontiers together. Okay, here goes nothing. This is so easy. And I'll be taking this. Okay, at this point, I think you know the drill. Fly to a new planet. Find a lovely little spot to land. And if all the stuff I brought still isn't enough, there's always room for more. Just one big happy solar family. And then head down to the planet core. Collect your prize. Add it to the pile of shinies. Oh god, so many planets. Okay, I think that's all of them. Now, before I put them on these pedestals, I got something to show you. So there's one thing I haven't really done yet in this playthrough, and that's my near and dear friend, Dynamite. But don't worry, I did a little setting up while I was collecting all that other stuff. Let me give you the grand tour. So these lovely machines right here are called atmospheric condensers. They pull gases out of the atmosphere and add them to these little containers. In this case, all these machines are pulling glorious, glorious sulfur, after which a little grabby arm takes it and adds it to the rack. Now, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of sulfur at this point. The reason we I need like this, by the way, is to make the explosive those. powder. To complete the formula, we also need carbon. I've got all these smelters here that are burning organics, at which point it adds the carbon to these racks. After which point, we head over here to these chemistry labs, select explosive powder, and after just a few moments... <laughs> We have a beautiful baby ball of explosion. Afterwards, we can make dynamite right from our backpack. Ah, fresh dynamite. I've been busy making a lot of these. So let's head on over here and add it to the pile. There you go. Welcome home, home guys. Yeah. So we're going to try and use that dynamite for something exciting. And wouldn't you know, I've got a spaceship over here all ready to go. As you can see, it's already packed to the brim with dynamite. Okay, so we're going to get on out of here and leave this beautiful base to keep doing its production. And we're going to head back over to our favorite planet, good old Silva. Oh. <laughs> okay, so as a first test, let's dig ourselves a modest hole. Let's just dump the whole column in there. Okay, bombs away. Quick, run, run, run. Oh. <laughs> what? That killed me. Either way, let's see what kind of damage that did. Wow. Pretty impressive for just one column of dynamite. Okay, test number two. Let's dig down a little bit. What if we dig like a trench? And in that trench, we're going to place dynamite. A whole bunch of dynamite. I've also learned my lesson this time. We're going to use something called a button repeater, which is going to allow me to run a cable all the way over to the dynamite. And then in theory, I can activate it safely from back here. Okay, here goes nothing. Up, oh, still dead. Oh, no. Oh, no, what happened? Let's go take a look. Oh, well, this is looking promising. Huh, that's quite the explosion. I gotta admit, I am pretty pleased. And I'm also ready to try some more. Okay, so we're gonna do another trench. Just a lot longer this time. So hold your horses and I'll be right back. Okay, I admit it. I got kind of lazy. I didn't want to make the trench. So instead, I just threw dynamite all over the ground. And originally, I was gonna do, like, a line all the way around the planet. But then I started to space out. So this is what we get. Just dynamite kind of everywhere, scattered over <laughs> mountains, just kind of mingling with all the natural resources. So at this point, I guess let's just pick a direction and go. But you know, I think I've got pretty decent coverage. But we're going to start back here at the beginning, back when I was trying with a trench. And then it just kind of goes from there for an undetermined amount of time. And also, I ran quite a few more of these things, because this time around, I want to be suitably out of the blast area. Okay, here we go. Huh. Everything seems to be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, the screen is just frozen this way. I feel like this is the most realistic depiction of what staring at a nuke would feel like. So, uh, I think we might just be stuck this way. <laughs> so I hope you had fun, I know I did. I know Silva probably did before it took its final breath. Oh, and don't worry, you don't miss much with the station thing. It just ends the game and there's credits or whatever. Hey there, it's Josh, welcome. I honestly expected the answer to show the ending. I'm kind of glad he didn't know. I uh I really enjoyed this video. It was funny as hell. And I got some ideas for my gameplay now. 
If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.